Well, first of all, I'd like to say that there aren't very many energy programs out there. When I researched all of the various programs recently, there are really only two or three accredited engineering programs. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada originally. I came out here to Indiana Tech uh, to actually go for the energy engineering program because of its uniqueness and its ability to get hands-on with the materials that I'm gonna be using in the future. Well, a few of the things I think that sets Indiana Tech apart is number one, you have very small classes. Uh, you have very close relationships with your professors. When you have a class of 10 people, it's much easier to get to know the professor and get in contact with him than if you have a class of 30, 40, or 50. You're gonna have the same professors for the majority of your classes. You're gonna have the same classmates for the majority of your classes. The more practical applications come in all the subsequent energy engineering classes. He transfers in a class that right after they're leaving the classroom and the board is filled with calculus. So in order to understand a lot of these topics, they're gonna to need to understand the calculus there. Calculus is the study of the, the rate of change, how fast things change. And depending upon whether it's energy engineering, industrial engineering, or whatever, they're going to need to use that and apply that. Professor Romary, um, he stands out to me the most right now because when I first got here, I had to take calculus, Calc 1, Calc 2. And he's the one of the professors that teaches it. And he was just really was a very kind and helpful helpful guy and he did whatever he could to help us out. He was very funny, always had a way of creatively teaching calculus to us that not a whole lot of people can do. And I think that and how he did it was all, is gonna be something that's gonna stick for me for a very long time. The field work that Indiana Tech can provide here is, for example, we have a 10 kilowatt windmill that the students can work with uh, we have a geothermal system uh, for a couple of the buildings for Yuteng Su and for Zollner uh, that uses geothermal principles to heat and cool the buildings in the summer and the winter. The PV array system, training system that we have down here in the basement allows us to wire up the panels we have down in the basement to set it up as a off the grid system or a battery bank system, which helps us because we can see every component of the system actually intertwining and how they work together with something that may not be easily visible when you're on the job site in, in a career. So definitely my uh, internship at Super Value Incorporated uh, was a very, very beneficial uh, program for me to be in. It was more based on the process and logistical side of engineering of, the, of my degree, not necessarily the design aspect. It helped me really learn how the most efficient way to do a, to do a task and some of the uh, boundaries that come with trying to make things more efficient. One of the things that we've been very fortunate here at Indiana Tech is that we've had a grant through AEP to help subsidize our students in taking some of the various trips at spring break. Over the last four years, I have taken, along with a couple of other chaperones, I've taken almost a couple of dozen students to a trip to Germany and Switzerland that focused on renewable energy. Uh, we've gone to Iceland last year, uh, focusing on geothermal energy, and we just recently returned from a trip to Costa Rica. Just last year, I went to Iceland with a couple of, of our peers, not even just energy engineers, but a couple of other uh, engineering majors went along with us. And for me, that was the highlight of my my college time. I mean, we learned a lot about like geothermal systems and how they converted to a country of basically like ran just by geothermal. And but it wasn't just learning about that. It was also learning about their culture as well, you know, and the past and the history and where they plan to go in their future. And all those things combined, I think, really, really kind of defines my experience here in Indiana Tech. You can be the smartest engineer in the world, but if you cannot talk to or work with other engineers and non-engineers, it's very hard to get anything done. I try to teach my students that while you may not like writing, it's gonna be a part of the job. You have to communicate if you're doing experiments or uh, testing hardware in the lab, you need to write it up. 
so that other people know what you did and the customer may want to know how, what are the results of that test. Something I would remember most about the faculty would be just the one-on-one -on -one aspect of it and how open they are to hearing your problems and concerns and willing to assist you. Uh, India, Indiana Tech with the class sizes being so small you really get that one-on-one -on -one talking uh, everyday type relationship with your advisors and your professors and having that is key to success I feel because being able to communicate with them and actually get your problems and questions across is going to help clarify things for you while you're in, in classes in school which is going to set you up for success.